Okay, so and I, both actually segue nicely into what we were just talking about with you know what's next, T air tart. So I mean, it's kind of it works out well, and we've got some other stuff to get to at the end there. But um, we'll try and get through this one pretty quick. Look, the Bengals they they shored up a lot of different stuff. Uh, they lost some players. They lost some veteran mainstays, locker room guys that you know it could could hurt you a little bit, but. I think in a lot of ways, the Bengals felt that they have improved. Some fans feel that they've improved as well. Uh, But one glaring area in which they have not addressed is veteran corner. They had interest in Kendall Fuller, who I think ended up going, what, to the Dolphins, right? Um, So there was reports that he was with the Dolphins. Um, And I have to credit this rabbit hole that I tumbled down earlier. I have to credit our guys from Bengals and Brews, Dale and Derek and – Greg and and others who so and go definitely go check out their channel their show it's a lot of fun and they bring a lot of good uh, good insight Bengals and Brews go check them out um, but I, look um, they started kind of they they just did this Twitter thing and they were hey, you know which which one of these guys remaining would you be interested in and one of the names up there and of course USC guy I you know I kind of gravitated to this guy a little bit. Um, I was big on him in the draft, but he has been large. I don't want to say like largely disappointing, but there's based on where he's been, he was picked and what he has done in the league has been a bit disappointing, but there are elements to this, namely affordability, depth, veteran leadership into the Bengals that, that, that is needed in that cornerback room for the Cincinnati Bengals, wherein this could provide some value and depth. Uh, for for the team on a on a one, another one of these low risk high end deals, and this goes back, John. This player it fits the mold of that old school Bengals outside free agent mindset, where you get a guy on a rental deal that is inexpensive, former first round pick that has you know or high pick in general that has a lot of upside. You hope to mine that last little bit out of it, kind of towards the middle end part of their career, and that's where I think this player comes in, and that. Would would be uh, Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson drafted by the Tennessee Titans, number eighteen overall back in twenty seventeen, um, and a guy that uh, you know uh, has had, had some flashes, has had some issues as well in terms of injuries, missing time, etc. And so this is a player that I think some people may you know kind of roll their eyes at. This is a player that some people may say, hey, why not? Depending on the the cost, the contract, et cetera. I'm going to play a couple things for everybody here now on just a sec here. I'm going to share it. Um, but I, I, you know, there's a lot to like with this guy. I think there's also a lot of concern a little bit in the mold of Trent Brown, but you know, look it, it to me, it's, it, it's very, very similar to an Eli Apple type of, um, type of situation where the Eli Apple former number 10 overall pick and comes into the Cincinnati Bengals after wandering around disappointing a little bit and ends up having a pretty decent career or a stint with the Bengals 5'10 185 is a Dory Jackson he's 28 right now 29 in September he only has four career interceptions uh, one of which was last year and it was a pick six um, so only four career interceptions not too high and I know that's not the end all be all stat for cornerbacks but you kind of want a, a little bit more in that regard, five forced fumbles, uh, one of those last year, four fumble recoveries in his career, 376 tackles total, um, 60, 63 of those last year. I'm going to talk about the tackles in just a little bit here. Also, early in his career was a guy who helped out on special teams, namely in the return game. So he could, you know, provide you a little bit of depth there, uh, you know. I don't, I don't know that the Bengals would ask him to do that per se when you have Charlie Jones and uh, a couple of options at, at kickoff return man as well, but could be in the mix there. Who knows? Um, here's a couple plays for you. Nice play. I think this is off of Jalen Hurts. Uh, gets, gets the ball off the tip and takes it all the way in for the pick six. That was the pick six last, last year against the Eagles. Um, and then just a nice little pass breakup right here on CD Lamb. So he read that pretty well. Uh, you know, again, the age is a question. 28, going to be 29 right after the first week of the season. He does have that former first round pedigree and, you know, abilities. Those are still there. Uh, I don't think he's capable of covering the top wide receivers in the league at this point in his career and in just the, the tape, at least not consistently. 
Um, he does bring a veteran presence in the young cornerback room. So you look at that, you got Cam Taylor Britt, you got DJ Turner, DJ Ivy. I mean, this is a guy that the Bengals like to bring in these veteran corners here and there, even if they don't even make it through final cuts. You know, this is kind of one of those guys that that could be hanging around and, and mentoring some of those young guys. And if he does make the team, be down on the depth chart a little bit, but still rotating in and, and you know, being a, a valued member there. Uh, he's got, he's still got good speed. He's got the special teams experience, averaging 54 tackles per year. He's a willing tackler. Um, there's a little bit of pros and cons with that aspect in itself. Ta- a lot, high amount of tackles a lot in, in some of these seasons, but you know, sometimes that also is indicating that guys are catching the ball often around on him. And so he's forced to being, be, being able to make tackles after giving up a big play. But you look at the 54 tackles per year and you see that he missed 32 games in his career, missing all that time and still putting up that those tackle numbers is pretty impressive, I think. In, in some regards, the Bengals lack tackling ability. They, they missed some of the tackling ability from their defensive backfield last year. So I think this is a guy, again, rental deal, low risk, high reward type of setup on the contract. Bengals need veteran corner. I... I I like the guy. Um, I don't like him maybe as, you know, as much as some other potential options or, you know, that sort of thing. But I, I think in a way, the reason why I'm highlighting this is because this feels Bengal esque in free agency approach, former first round guy. Let's, let's mine the rest out of what he's got in, in the tank. And this just lines up quite, quite well, like an Eli Apple situation. Oh, by the way, Eli Apple, when he was signed, by the Bengals the first time around, I believe it was March 23rd. Uh, and then the ne- next time came around that the Bengals re-signed him, I think it was M- March 20th. So, uh, I mean, the, the timeline kind of fits here a little bit. This could be one of those guys, again, that hangs around until after the draft and teams kind of kick the tires on if he hasn't been picked up and they don't get the corner in the draft. But, again, veteran guy to fill out some depth chart needs. I wouldn't have a problem here. Sydney, Sydney Jones, another example, signed March 27th by the Bengals last year. I'm surprised, Anthony, you didn't mention where Dory Jackson went to college. I thought that'd be the first. Well, thing. I tried not to. I tried not to. <laughs> if no one USC. knows that he went to, USC. if no one knows he went to USC, I will make sure that people know that Anthony is talking about a USC Trojan. Um, everything I think you said may, makes a lot of sense, though. Um, just not not only the first round pedigree, but the experience. Um, before free agency began, there was a report. That the Bengals were interested in Kendall Fuller, which I think was yep. a surprise to many, considering Kendall Fuller is a starting cornerback, and he, if he would have came to the Bengals, he would be starting over DJ Turner. So that established some type of thought that oh, like maybe the Bengals, if the price is right, would be aggressive in giving DJ Turner at the very least healthy competition for that starting cornerback job opposite of Cam Taylor Britt. But Dory Jackson at this stage in his career, I don't think would be starting over DJ Turner unless he has a phenomenal training camp or a phenomenal preseason and DJ Turner continues to regress like he did at the end of last season. But the Bengals are the Bengals and they've always valued cornerback at a very high rate and they've always invested at least talented guys with talented pasts and histories and talented pedigrees. Dory Jackson fits that bill. He was, I think, a much better Titan than he was a Giant. Um, I think also, though, there has to be the consideration of Filling out not just the experience, but the qualities and traits that the Bengals may be missing at cornerback. Um, obviously, Cam Taylor Britt, very physical, built very well, and has speed. You get, you can allow him to take on any X receiver that comes through the doors of Paycor Stadium. With DJ Turner, if they're looking for more competition or someone to push him or maybe someone to start over him, I would imagine like the the size and stature of Turner has always been his biggest weakness. I say always as like he's been around the league for whatever, but his biggest weakness coming into the NFL was he had a slighter frame. He had shorter arms. He was only 180 pounds. He looked more like a nickel guy, a guy who can play in the slot instead of maybe a guy who can survive on the boundary. And we saw some of those issues last year. And with Adoree Jackson, he's not that much bigger. I don't think he's any bigger than 185 pounds, which is what he was coming into the league. I think he's got longer arms. I think he's got more length to him, which is why he's had more ball production over the course of his career. That's why he's allowed been allowed to have uh, more ball, ball ball production compared to what DJ Turner had just as a rookie, which obviously not comparable, but you, you kind of get my point. So mm-hmm. I don't know if a Dory Jackson physically is along those lines of giving them something different than DJ Turner, but I think in terms of just like an ideal backup and someone who can replace exactly what um, you would be missing if something were to happen with DJ Turner in terms of injury, 
that makes a lot of sense. But obviously, someone that gives them any sort of experience now that uh, Ch- uh, Chidabe Awuzie is with the Tennessee Titans, who, by the way, was the most the highest paid cornerback in free agency this year, which I don't think anyone necessarily expected. Maybe it was an indication of what the market was, and maybe it was Tennessee maybe just overpaying for th- the fact that Brian Callahan and cornerback coach Steve Jackson knew who he was. But regardless, that that's still a hole in the roster, and it's still something that I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals did address with a guy like Adoree Jackson. I think the pedigree makes sense. I think the past production makes sense, and the experience makes sense. Um, it, it would, I think, at least round out the depth of that room because I think they're still lacking one more body there for sure. They are lacking one more body there. And look, I made this parallel and I've been kind of harping on the parallel of Eli Apple, right? And just what happened with him with the Cincinnati Bengals and how he came to him. And does anybody remember why he was signed? I mean, he was signed because the Bengals had two set starters, they thought, in Cheeto and Trey Waynes, right? Those were their starting quarterbacks, cornerbacks. Trey Waynes gets hurt, never really returns to the field. Eli Apple is thrust into a starting spot, and we all go, oh, boy, really? I mean, that's that's was the initial reaction, and he ended up being pretty dang good for what they asked him to do in the role he was thrust in, and he was a important. Do you remember how well he played in that Titans game, the Titans playoff game? And, I mean, he was making a lot of plays down the stretch and in important games. He had, I mean, he was an imperfect cornerback, but for the situation and what they needed him to do, he came in and filled in nicely. I think you give DJ Turner his shot, but a guy like this could be either a contingency plan if it does not work out again uh, towards, you know, like we saw a little bit towards the end of the year with DJ Turner. I still think DJ Turner has a lot of upside and could be a very good player. But if it, if it doesn't work out, if there's an injury or that sort of thing, this is just that type of player that you ascend to maybe a higher profile role than you would prefer but hope that it pans out in a similar way that it did for you with Eli Apple. And so that's where I make this parallel from Adoree Jackson to the Bengals and Eli Apple. Adoree is one of those guys where I remember there was a lot of debate regarding like if he was even worth a first round pick and how high should he have gone in the first round. I'm sure there was something similar with Eli Apple. And those are the players that are fascinating to me because they may not work out in their first round, team or second team maybe their first or second opportunities but there's always there's value with every player right and there's always a, a right price and a right role for these these guys and I think with Adori coming into a young corner a mostly young cornerback room with potential chances to play should something happen to the guys in front of him with a very solid coaching staff obviously a defense coordinator with the with a defensive back background I think that those were the reasons why Eli Apple ended up being the best version of himself playing on a cheap deal as starting out as a backup and then filling in as a starter instead of coming in as a first round pick for the, the New York Giants and then not not fulfilling those expectations. And I think something similar could happen to Dory Jackson. So yes, I, I'm I'm in agreement. If they were to sign him or maybe a guy like Rocky Sin, I think that would make a lot of sense to just round out that room. Yeah, the caveat is Apple had the Lou Anarumo connection from his time with the Giants. That that doesn't you know, there's not that tight tight knit thing going on here but i still think that that uh, there there are some parallels there with this uh with this potential move and again i want to credit the Bengals and brews crew dale greg derek and i I saw our 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 guy uh pork chop also part of the Bengals and brews crew um doing some great work over on their show but uh, they kind of kicked off the conversation and i really dug myself into uh, into a hole, just thinking about Adoree Jackson, really the last uh, half day or so, and kind of feeling like, man, this could be this could be a, a fit for the Bengals and what they need, what they traditionally like in outside free agency, particularly at this point in the game.